Hi, Kerry here again with another new video for you on my channel. Hope you're enjoying the ones that are already there. You know, drop a comment down there if you can. Let me know how you how things are going for you. Now today I want to talk about a book I finished a couple of days ago, and that is this Scarred for Life Volume 2 Television in the 1980s. Now the uh, actual title seems to jump around depending on what page you look at. Uh, so full name on the publishing page is Scarred for Life Volume 2, the 1980s Part 1 Television. Um, they seem to have planned to produce at least one more volume about the 1980s, whether that will be Volume 3 or Volume 2.2, seems to be uh, a little confusing in the, in, the, in the text itself. So, well, we'll go back a, a decade or so, and um, there's always been movements and interests online about looking back to childhood favourite television, favourite books, movies, things that influence them. And as social media has developed, people have come together and talked about these things. Did they really see this? Did that really happen? How can I see it again? And people have bonded online with, uh, with these shared interests. Now, as with so many things online, of late, this has become a, a bit of a thing, a bit of a movement. I think the term hauntology has been co-opted for this movement. Another, another name that's been given to it is the haunted generation. It seems to refer to a group of people, mainly in their 40s or 50s, who grew up in the 70s and 80s and um, had shared experiences of various media, various various uh, television, me movies, books, cultural crazes, that type of thing. So people, you can find websites, forums, all that type of thing these days. Um, and around three and a half years ago, as part of this effort, uh, a group of people got together and they put out a, a book. Now this book is, I'll just grab it here, Scarred for Life, Volume 1, the 1970s. Now, this is a hefty tone, it's over 700 pages thick, and this covered uh, not just television, but movies, books, all the other stuff I mentioned, and there's an there's a overview of the slightly weird, slightly unusual, slightly disturbing things that we all saw as children in the 1970s. Now, they, as soon as they had published the first volume, they kept promising a, another volume to cover the 80s, and that book finally arrived late last year, in the form of Scarred for Life, Volume 2. Now, uh, as I had such a lot of material on the 1980s, they had to split it into more than one volume, as I mentioned earlier. So this volume only covers television. It's uh, quite an excellent read. It's more or less 60, 70 articles about all sorts of television. Uh, they break it down into like children's television, surreal drama, science fiction, and they also have uh, separate sections for things like how telev ma television explored mass unemployment in the UK in the 80s and there's quite a si significant section on the public information film fillers that used to screen on UK television and that brings up one of the uh, slight problems with this book is that it is very UK centric it's written expecting the reader to have a certain knowledge certain memories of a certain time and place and as I am in New Zealand, a lot of that doesn't really gel with me. Uh, a lot of the, the big name TV programs, the dramas, the science fiction, what have you, did screen here. So I'd say about 70, 75% of, of that material I do recognise. But there's quite a lot in here which never seem to have made it over here, especially the PIFs, the public information films. Um, advertising obviously was different here. And there's just some dramas, some some comedies that I don't recall at all ever having screened here, but of course my memory is limited to what I saw as a child, so that's probably uh, partially my problem. Now the book is written in a, in a jokey, familiar tone. Um, you, they don't take the things too seriously. They're always questioning the uh, the reasons why certain things came to, to do the screen, and they put put them into context uh, with little stories from their own life and how they felt and what they saw at the time. So I enjoyed the book. There's a few more problems. There's a few typos. There's a, 
a little bit of layout um, error near the front. Um, uh, there's a bit of repetition. It's obviously, a, a small team were working on each article independently, and sometimes they did repeat things, and some of the phrases which they probably thought were clever at the time seemed to be repeated by other people. Um, it doesn't really detract too much from the book. It probably could have just done with a, a run past an editor and again, but um, who am I to say I haven't published a book? Um, and basically, these books, both of them, Scarred for Life Volume 1 and 2, aren't available from normal booksellers. They only seem to be available, at least so far, from lulu.com. It's a print-on-demand self-publishing service. Now, both of them are available as the physical books or PDF files. And lulu.com quite frequently has discount codes, so if you can get quite a good deal uh, on these books. Okay, well, that's uh, Scar for Life Volume 2. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you're at all interested in hauntology or the haunted generation, or just have strong memories of some strange stuff on TV and the movies and what have you, um, as a child, um, go grab them. They're, they're worth a read, they're fun, they're enjoyable, you'll learn a few things, and uh, that thing that you half remembered, you'll find out maybe what was behind it, and that other lots of other people saw it too. Okay, have a great day.